Superman Escape from Krypton is the iconic launch coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This originally opened as the world's tallest and fastest coaster. While that title has since been lost between other rides being built and Superman slowing down, it is still the tallest and fastest coaster in all of California, and it's a pretty unique launch coaster too. Find out why in this review. Fujiyama opened in 1996 as the world's tallest and fastest coaster. Located at Fuji-Q Highland, this Togo hypercoaster stood a whopping 259 feet or 79 meters tall, and it reached a top speed of 81 miles per hour or 130 kilometers per hour. However, Intamin and Six Flags Magic Mountain were in the process of building something that would crush those records. Superman the Escape would be a reverse freefall coaster reaching speeds of 100 miles per hour or 161 kilometers per hour and heights of 415 feet or 127 meters. The ride was supposed to open in June of 1996, but Superman was delayed for nearly a year. The primary issue was the launch system. Today, Linear Synchronous Motors or LSMs are the preferred launch mechanism for most manufacturers, but Superman was the first roller coaster to use this technology. But as we've seen with Intamin over the years, they have never been afraid to take on groundbreaking or innovative projects. This was no different. This launch system caused a lot of headaches, but the park finally got the coaster open in March of 1997. Interestingly, this was not the only reverse freefall coaster Intamin was working on at the time. They were building a similar ride for Dreamworld in Australia named Tower of Terror. That ride opened in January of 1997, making it the first coaster to officially break the 100 mile per hour speed barrier. Superman tied that speed record upon opening, and it took sole ownership of the height record. Although several have debated these claims, the most notable feud occurred with Cedar Point. When Cedar Point announced Millennium Force for the 2000 season, they claimed it would be the world's tallest and fastest coaster. That ride would stand 310 feet or 94 meters tall and reach speeds of 93 miles per hour or 150 kilometers per hour. Impressive figures for sure, but not quite as good as Superman's stats. The big difference was that Millennium Force was a full circuit coaster. Superman is a shuttle coaster, and some even debated whether it counted as a coaster. The other issue has been the actual speed and height the ride vehicles achieve. While the ride can and has hit 100 miles per hour, it rarely does so. It did this during pass holder previews decades ago, and during promo shoots. At these speeds, the ride is more prone to downtime and parts wearing out faster. I've heard rumors the ride more typically runs in the 88 to 92 mile per hour range to optimize guest satisfaction and uptime. The lower speed leads to the ride not climbing as high up the spike. Most days, the car barely touches the red section on the tower. I believe the red is only on the top third of the tower, meaning the car makes it roughly three quarters of the way up the tower, if that. Then the tower is 415 feet from the base supports, but the launch track starts up the hill. All this leads to the drop being quite a bit less than the tower's overall height. The drop height is listed as 328 feet, or 100 meters, and I believe that figure is achieved if the train runs at full speed and clips the brakes at the top. But when the ride runs at normal speed, I believe the drop is closer to 26 or 28 stories tall. From 1997 to 2010, this ride was known as Superman the Escape. During these years, both sides faced forwards and it was more common to see both sides in operation. The ride's track and supports had a whitish gray color to it, and best of all, there was a Superman statue atop the tower staring down at guests. In 2011, the ride was rebranded as Superman Escape from Krypton. There were four key changes. First, the tower received its current red, blue, and yellow color palette. I honestly preferred the more subtle white, but this is definitely more eye-catching, and the ride still has the same deafening roar. This is one of the loudest amusement rides in the world, and everyone in the park knows when it's running. It is that loud. Second, the ride's top speed was increased to 104 miles per hour, or 167 kilometers per hour. Third, the trains were turned backwards for a reverse launch. Fourth, the ride received brand new trains. In the ride's stint as Superman the Escape, each train was comprised of just one car. The front row held just three guests, while rows two through four held four riders each, 
so the ride could accommodate a max of 15 riders per side at a time, and riders were restrained by just a seatbelt and T-bar combination, much like Intamin's early hypercoasters. Now interestingly, one of these old cars can now be found at the Daytona Speedway in Florida, where it has since been turned into a photo opportunity at the racetrack. When the ride reopened as Superman escaped from Krypton, the ride still had single car trains, but the seat just 14 riders. The front three rows would hold four riders each, but the back row would seat just two people. And unfortunately, the ride received over the shoulder harnesses with arm shields for clearance purposes. While these restraints are not uncomfortable, they take away the superior freedom of the original lap bars. The next change to this ride occurred in 2012. Lex Luthor Drop of Doom was built in the side of Superman's tower. This was also built by Intamin, and it opened as the world's tallest drop tower. This ride is freaky on its own with its size, but it gets extra scary whenever Superman runs simultaneously because the tower sways quite noticeably. Then in 2021, Superman was reconfigured to have the left side launch riders forwards, and the right side would launch riders backwards still. This would theoretically give guests the option to choose which way they'd want to experience Superman as they enter the queue line. But in my visits since this change has happened, I have only seen the left side in operation. It is worth noting this ride can be a bit tricky to experience. It is frequently closed for maintenance if you visit in the winter months, and I have seen it closed for staffing on quiet days as well. If you see this ride running and it's a priority for you, I would head there ASAP. Superman only has a standby line. There is no flash pass nor single rider line available. The wait time tends to be towards the middle of the pack for the park's coasters despite its limited throughput. If it is open and you head there early in the morning, you typically will encounter a short wait. Few people want to start their day by hiking up Samurai Summit. Superman's queue line and station is housed in the Fortress of Solitude. The crystallized rockwork is spot on, and if you visit on a hot day, it tends to have glorious air conditioning. There also are one or two props on each side. At the end of the queue, giant doors block the load platform and you queue up for your desired row. The best row by far in Superman is whichever one places you in the front of the vehicle. This allows you to feel the full force of the ride speed against your face. If you're riding on the right side, you want the leftmost row. If you're riding on the right side, you also want the leftmost row. I would advise avoiding the rightmost row on either side because that one accommodates just two riders and the line moves twice as slow. The station is rather dark and cramped. That's why it's exciting when you finally take off. The launch feels radically different on both sides. On the backward side, your upper body is jerked over the harness when you start off. It's a similar phenomenon to other backwards launches. The rest of the launch is pretty gradual in terms of the rate of acceleration. I believe this may be the longest launch in the world. It takes 7 seconds to reach your top speed. Most coasters accelerate to their max speed in half that time. If you're used to other coaster launches like me, it feels downright unnatural to just keep on accelerating for that long. And you cannot tell when the launch will end because the spike is behind you out of sight. On the forward side, the initial kick is not as exciting but you better feel the speed, especially if you're in the front row. The wind continuously bashes against your face as you rocket down the launch track. It is quite the rush. Then you have the spike. You get blasted with positive G's at the base, and then you head up the tower. The visuals are quite different between the two. On the forward side, you are staring up the spike. You see the end of the track, which is always an unnerving visual but it is a bit less effective on Superman because you aren't really going to approach the end of the track at the ride's current speed. On the backward side, you are staring towards the ground, and more notably, you get this gorgeous panoramic view of the park as you rise up the tower. Then when you stall out, you get some fun weightlessness on both sides. It's not as forceful as traditional airtime, but you'll still feel floaty for 5-6 to six seconds, similar to other spikes out there. You then zip back down the tower, the forward side stares at the sky, and the primary thrill is that you cannot see the bottom, but the seats do block the wind. Meanwhile, the backward side has a better sense of speed on the finale. Since that car is now facing the direction of travel, riders in the front row now get hit with wind in a similar fashion to a launch as the train regains all its speed. You then rumble down the launch track. 
but you start to slow down this time. Eventually, you enter the station at a controlled pace and come to a stop. The ride covers 1,235 feet, or 376 meters of track, but you basically cover that length twice given the shuttle nature. But it is still a super short ride that's over in a flash. The final thing I want to touch on is the ride's smoothness. Some of these high speed launch coasters are known for having a shimmy, but I'm glad to say that Superman is extremely smooth even after all these years. I am intrigued with this ride's long term prospects are, at least in its current state. The most concerning item is that Superman's sister ride in Tower of Terror closed in 2019. These were the only two reverse freefall coasters Intamin ever made, so it cannot be easy to get parts for them. On the bright side, I believe Superman received spare parts from Tower of Terror after its closure, so that should keep Magic Mountain's ride running. And if it came down to it, I imagine Magic Mountain could siphon parts off from one side to maximize the longevity of the other. Additionally, this ride has a very high operating cost, and it's no longer one of the park's top tier attractions. It's iconic and fun, but very few people have it as one of their favorite rides at the park anymore. Then there was a survey a few years ago that showed Six Flags reimagining the ride into an all new concept. The coaster would have been transformed into a full circuit launch coaster. Riders would have been shot up the tower on one side, have this weird turnaround 40 stories in the air, and go back down the other side. Then there would be additional elements after the spike including airtime hills and inversions. So it's clear the park is at least contemplating options to breathe new life into this attraction. So what would I rate Superman Escape from Krypton? I would give this coaster a 6 out of 10. This is a unique launch coaster. The acceleration feels a lot different on this one compared to other launch coasters simply because of how long that acceleration lasts for. While this is a fun change of pace, I prefer a more rapid and intense launch over this one. I also prefer the airtime of a traditional top hat over a spike. Still, that spike does give plenty of weightlessness and one heck of a view, especially on that backward side. But this ride still is a worthwhile spot in Magic Mountain's extensive coaster lineup, and the park's skyline would never look the same if the ride were removed. So those are my thoughts on Superman at Six Flags Magic Mountain. What are your thoughts on the last remaining reverse freefall coaster? Do you enjoy this ride, or do you find it more of a gimmick? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.